Hey everybody, I am Shay Taylor. I finally found you in IT right here who is willing to be interviewed. This is IT2 Mills, so we will just get right into it. What the heck is an IT? Uh, so IT is an information systems technician because you're just in charge of communications and networks. So what does that mean? Uh, so if you're on a ship like I was, uh, I was on a small boy, so it was a cruiser platform. Oh nice. Yeah. I, I heard that's the life. Sure. It's not bad. <laughs> Uh, is out of Yokosuka, Japan, so we're FDNF for deployed naval forces. Uh, and all you do on a day-to-day -day basis, being on a small boy, you do everything part of the job. So like, yeah, let's hear it. you're going to do comms, set up circuits from VHF, UHF, SHF, EHF, okay. HF. Okay, what does any of that mean? So they're like, uh, so VHF, very high frequency, uh, UHF, ultra high frequency. Like, what are you physically doing? Uh, so what you physically do, I mean, like in layman's terms, because if somebody's like looking into doing IT and they've never heard of what VHF is, okay, uh, how do you like explain? So pretty much you're connecting transmitters, okay. like right, it's going to transmit a signal, mm -hmm. and receivers, which will receive your signal. You connect them together through like patch panels, essentially. Okay. Like, like little things, you just plug them in. So connecting That's wires. Like, pretty much, you connect wires okay. to the transmitter and receiver. And with uh, whatever frequency that the Navy gives us, like Navy owned frequencies. And then you connect them to a phone for people who work in our like operations department type okay. of deal. The people that talk to other people. And yeah. they can just talk to a ship within X amount of distance That's within cool. the circuit. So you are basically in control of the ship being capable of communicating? Uh, yeah, 100%. Without ITs, you wouldn't be able to get off ship through like Facebook because we control essentially if you can get onto the internet yeah. and also with voice comms. So you are essential. Should be. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, because I'm sure everyone loves their Facebook on the ship. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's take it back to like A school. What was that like? Uh, it's just generic IT stuff, like getting used to managing a network. Uh, so they do like just the very basic, like creating a person's account so they can log in. Okay. Like, stuff like that, very yeah. basic. And then they did, we had these virtual realities, which was uh, how we set up our communications equipment because we don't have any like, they don't have like a little replica of a ship in Quarry Station. Yeah. So we had to just kind of do it through virtual reality type of deal. Okay. Most of the equipment's super old. Luckily, the ship I went to was made in 92. 1992, so Is I Is that considered old? For a ship, yeah. Okay. Well, I for, don't know what's considered old for a ship. That's right, yeah. Uh, for like a, for a ship, especially how long it's been in Japan, I mean, it's 92 is what, 28, 29 years or something 27. like that? 27. 27. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's old for a ship. Right. Right. Uh, some of the other, that's why like all those ships around there are on the list to get decommissioned. Okay. Or at least the last list that was put out. So was, it, was A school hard? Like, no. did a lot of people fail it? No, nobody nobody yeah, failed good. from my class. Yeah. I mean, you have your ones and twos, people who don't like computers or like don't like the, that kind of stuff. I yeah. thought it was super easy. I also like being in IT, what I found out, so it wasn't hard for me. So what is your favorite part of being in IT and your least favorite part? Uh, favorite part would be just troubleshooting the network. So. Whenever like mail goes down or the internet goes down or just specific specific things that happen within the IT realm of stuff that we're in charge of, you gotta troubleshoot, you know, dig into it. So you like that. that? Yeah, that's the fun. You part. like when things don't work. Yeah, because that's the fun. <laughs> that's the fun part. That's. No. I mean, that's when you said like I've had a couple twenty-four hour plus days of troubleshooting. Twenty-four hour days. Yeah. I mean that happened. Not that's not like common. Yeah. But, but it happens sometimes. And that's why they teach you in boot camp how to stay up for over 24 hours. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, i never forget that day. Nope. Uh, so what's your least favorite part? Help desk. What is that? Oh, you're just like... Helping. Uh, yeah, your customer service. Yeah, so customer service is huge on it because you service the whole ship, but it's just... It gets better for like... It's probably going to get better as time goes on. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of... Uh, a lot of these people who are within their mid to high 30s, they'll call you and you'll go down there and... 30s? You'll, you'll just plug in the computer for them because it wasn't plugged in the are whole time. Are you serious? I've done that before. 
that's that's a real thing. So that's frustrating. So would you say you have to be a people person to be in IT? Not necessarily. So like my one of my buddies who's still in Japan right now on my ship, he's the most socially awkward person I know. Okay. But he's a great IT. So, so he can, can you can get around not doing that. It's better to be a people person. I mean, it's better to be a people person in general. Yeah. It really helps you advance in life, but it does. You don't have to be. You can still be a good IT because a lot of some ITs just sit in their dark corner and. I introverted and yeah, just want to do their stuff. work. Exactly. Yeah. So See, I don't know if I would survive being in IT. I like. I really like. I like talking and getting to know know people and. Well, you talked to everybody. I knew all yeah. three hundred fifty six people. Oh, that's true. Because they probably all come to you all, all the time. time. <laughs> they ask favors, all sorts of stuff. So you you get to talk to people, but you just have to also kind of put yourself out there. Yeah. But, so how did you pick IT? Uh, so I picked IT. Because I came in as a different rate, couldn't hack it, <laughs> so I dropped and uh, I had three choices. It was IT, BM, or uh, Undead Seaman. And uh, I called my recruiter back down in North Carolina. Yeah. Talked to him and he said, go with Intel rate. It yeah. better. So Set you up. Job. Yeah, so that's, I just picked it and it's, it's worked out. Me. Yeah, absolutely. Good. I mean, Tell me about your ship experience. Um. Ship experience was rough. Like, uh, like you wake. So, what's your typical day? You wake up in the morning, what time, and then for, go to sleep at what time? For like underway. Yeah. Uh, so typical, typical Monday through Sunday because you work seven days a week underway. Okay. There are no breaks. Uh, typically, I'd wake up probably maybe like six to six thirty. Okay. Uh, I'm on watch for 12 hours, so watch starts at 7. I get off at 1900, but that doesn't necessarily mean I actually get off of work. Right. I normally work about an extra four hours, so I work about 16 hours a day. I have definitely Monday through Saturday. If anything's broken, it could go much longer. Uh, Sunday, you, you're supposed to do a holiday routine. It's kind of hard for an IT to do a holiday routine, so that's so much because uh, we're in charge of. Uh, like cryptographic equipment, so if you want to go down, you have to turn over to somebody else, it's yeah. a whole hassle. But normally on Sundays, we can get away with a 12 hour shift, and that's it. And then we go to bed, I mean, just kind of whenever you get to bed, maybe 22, 23, roughly. 10, 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. oh get about five goodness. hours, six hours sleep. And that's on average. And then uh, some people, like some of our ITs, worked out a lot. It's, it's hard to work out when you're on a Port and starboard, so 12 on 12 off rotation. Yeah, because you just are probably done when you get off. Yeah, you're pretty drained. We have done 8 on 16 off. Okay. Which is, that gets you a good workout rotation because you can also get a good 8 hours of sleep. How can you choose that? Personnel, qualifications, chain of So command. if you're, I mean, obviously, do you think that, is that IT rate undermanned? Uh, yes. Yeah. That so is. if you want to be in IT, make sure that you love it, right? Yeah. Because you're gonna, I mean, manning is so hard in the military because some rates are overmanned, some are undermanned, it just depends. Mm -hmm. But every IT I've met is not only like so intelligent, but just overworked. No, oh, that, that could The truth? Yeah. Yeah. It's, a lot of people get out because it's for pay, pretty much. Yeah. Say somebody has no experience with computers. Do you think they will be successful in the IT rate? Yes. They set you up pretty good? Yeah, it's all on the job training. So you'll learn everything from the job. Like I didn't know anything about computers. After I went through A and C, A and C school, I had like kind of like basic knowledge. Mm -hmm. But when you get, when I got to my first ship, my first IT2 was, he knew a lot. <laughs> he just, he was really smart. So yeah. I just learned a bunch from him and then kept catching on. There's books you can read. Okay. There, there, there's no reason why you couldn't be a good IT unless you just didn't want to be. That's good advice. So would you suggest it to somebody? Yeah, I think it's the best, best rate in the Navy. Oh, come on. <laughs> I feel like everyone <laughs> says that about their own rate. I sit in the AC room all day long. I control if uh, you would get on the internet or not. So That's if I true. need something done, it gets <laughs> done. <laughs> not really, not really. You can't do you but I feel it. like I feel like so you have something to offer somebody. I hear like when you're on a ship, you want to make friends with all the rates, at least one person in each rate, so that you guys can like kind of yeah like trade off. 
it's good to have a friend in every rate, especially when you like go to get like your uh, surface pen. Yeah. Uh, that, but I mean, you just want to be friends with admin, supply, the ITs, and the cooks. So, yes, and right. You have those four, you'll you be fine. You can have it made. Yeah, that's so good. That'd be easy. So, could you pick your orders out of C school? No. So you were just given a ship. Yeah, we were all completely random. Me and one other guy uh, went to Japan. He went to Sasebo. Went to Koska. Everyone else was stateside, completely random. There was, I think we all went to a ship except two people got short duty. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have to go back to a ship now, yes. right? Because you got needs of the Navy, which mm -hmm. is, I don't really, obviously don't know like the intricacies of it and how it works, but I know when you pick orders, what you choose, five different places? Uh, it's seven now. They just seven yeah, and they just you didn't get any one of those? Nope, and you do it for three looks. So three Do you know why? So needs of the Navy essentially, uh, ships have, um, uh, they have minimum, a minimum requirement that you have to meet for like NECs and personnel mm -hmm. to go underway. Okay. So to meet that minimum requirement, that's how people get needs of the Navy. So since it's an operational command more so than shore duty, since it's sea duty, they were going to choose someone from whoever was up for orders at the time to go to that ship and fill a billet. And I just happened to be that unlucky just soul. Just unlucky. <laughs> Yeah. Dang. Mm -hmm. They should give you like a super bonus or something. I mean like uh, you get a one-time payment. It's not a lot of money, but. I feel like ISs and ITs, we work very closely together, but so different, such different things. Yeah. No, I sit there and make PowerPoints all day and you sit there and connect things and fix things on the computer and map to printers. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Map printers, that's what a lot of ITs do. Oh, tell me a sea story. Anything. The most epic thing that's happened to you or the craziest? I'm trying to think of something appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's on the news, so I can talk about it, yeah. I guess. Uh, they, made a, they made an article on my ship because uh, during a election in Taiwan, they were being pressured by you know, other people and stuff. So we went through the Taiwan Strait, oh and they put a article out about us. It was pretty cool, very nerve-wracking. There's a lot of a lot of other things going on around yeah, us. Yeah, so, there's a lot of threats. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so it was constant. That was like a constant working, constant just go outside once every like two weeks. So. What? I mean, it's just, you just don't think about it. Oh my God. See, this is why I would not survive on a ship. I run off the sun. You're going to run off Monsters and Red Bulls underway. Oh my God. Monsters and Red Bull coffee. I probably drink like Three, four coffees within a 12-hour period. A couple monsters, or well, not monsters. I didn't drink monsters, but a couple Red Bulls. That was every every day for 12-hour period. Oh my God. So, what's your best advice for like someone getting through deployment? I mean, make make friends with the people there. You know, embrace the uh, suck together. Yeah, embrace the suck together. You need to find uh, get into a routine is the yeah. best thing. It goes once you get in a routine, it goes super fast. Until the last two weeks, you know you're pulling in. That, yeah. Those are slowest times. I'm sure. So as long as you can make, if you make it through the first part, you'll be fine. You know, talk to people. Don't be secluded. Yeah. Don't isolate yourself. Yeah. Were you able to stop at any port calls, or was this all during the vid times? Uh, so I, well, we did do a deployment on the vid, but uh, so I've probably I have like two to three hundred days underway. Okay. Through that's uh, a good amount. It's decent. Yeah. Not bad. Um. But before COVID, we hit, I haven't hit a foreign port, sadly to say, other than just being in Japan. So I hit Okinawa, Japan, and I hit Sasebo, Japan. And okay. Those are the only two ports. We, we docked in like Guam, it was a working port, meaning you're not allowed to leave the ship. Uh, we'd go there for like a couple hours, refuel, get some supplies, leave. Okay. Uh, we didn't, did that there. We also did that in South Korea, also, but didn't get to leave the ship again. So that's kind of it. So we didn't really hit a crazy amount of ports. We were primarily going underway. Uh, we did a lot of independent steaming, so we went by ourselves. That's cool. Yeah, it's better than being with the carrier, because with the carrier, it's a lot harder for us. Because well, you, you're, I mean, you're catering to them. You're there to protect the carrier. Exactly. And when you're independent, you're just, you can cruise as fast, as slow as you want, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, they kind of have us going. We don't have to set up as many circuits when we're by ourselves, too. When we're at the carrier, we have about 24 circuits instead of our normal like 10. So how so what happens if you mess up like plug a wrong circuit in or 
Like, can you gravely mess up in a, like, I guess, not disastrous way, but um, have kind of a big oops? Is that, like, a danger of the job? For, I mean, even, like, I guess electrical safety would be the biggest thing. Okay. But, well. Like, what about, like, intelligence, information? Not for. Spilling. Oh, for spill, uh, spillage. Well, spillage, that's. That's not really like us messing up. That's, that's us. That's just everyone that's else us. in general. Yeah. Uh, and I've, spillages can be bad, but normally we're able to stop it. We, have, we just got a lot of like safety protocols. Yeah. But I think the worst thing we can mess up for comms specifically, so I guess it was actually something that was cool that I did underway. We shot a, our SM2 missiles at drones, um, like practice yeah. know, exercise. So that was cool. So I got to watch shoot an SM2 missile. I mean, that ship. You shot a missile from the ship. Yeah, VLS, which is vertical launching system. Yeah. So they shot up an SM2, which is like okay, yeah, it's it's a huge missile. I don't know, it's really big. And we hit a drone. We shot two drones out of the sky, and we also shot our harpoon missile. That's crazy. That's just shoot. That's just sh people shoot missiles all the time. There's videos. What 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 UAVs? Oh no, they're like milit are like ours. So we have our own UAVs that we practice shooting now. Yeah, I mean you have to make sure you can. <laughs> that's how you test to make sure our systems work, right? Like however, all the. I don't know. Maybe you like targeted a bird or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. No, we shot like our own little drones down for during an exercise. That's cool. So we got to do a missile shoot, but uh, if our comms would have dropped during that, we wouldn't be allowed to shoot. So okay. That's a big thing, and they stayed up the whole time. Yeah, that's so, exciting. Yeah, that, Good that work was, on you, that was right? Cool. Yeah, I mean, it was, I think it was easy, but the other ships had issues. How many ITs are on typically on a ship? Uh, so for a cruiser, we had about twenty ITs. Okay. But that's that's also including like chain of command up to like the khaki level. On a carrier, they have a lot. I don't even know. Sure. I haven't even got there. I think they have maybe 60. I, I really don't know. They have a ton. Uh, DDGs have a little bit less than we do. They're probably like 15. So not, not a bad amount. You know, it's good. good. Yeah. Good enough. Decent. But you still have to work 12 hours a day, which is... Yeah. Is there actual work to be doing 12 hours a day? Or is it just like you need to be sitting here? A little bit of both. It depends. Like, uh, I mean, our biggest thing about our job is monitoring, right? So if nothing ever breaks, then we we don't really do anything. Okay. But if something breaks, things always break. Exactly. Ex <laughs> Government equipment is. You would think that they would have the top of the top. I mean. But I feel like it is so slow, and everything breaks, and I never know what to do. I just want. I want to throw the computers across the room. Yeah, it's just. I don't know. They're, they work. They work great when they work. <laughs> it's just when yeah, they, just when they break. want to work. But then you, I don't know. Then you learn how to fix it, and then if it breaks again, you just fix it again. It's Has there ever process. been a problem that you couldn't solve? Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. What do you do about that? Uh, for us, we call civilians in. Okay. So we send out a, uh, we send out like a little message to let people know, like, hey, we need help, and then a civilian either in Japan or someone from San Diego will fly out and they'll come on board and help us. They're like, wow, mm -hmm. even when you're out to sea? No. Okay. No, they're not, they're, no, like, we're out to drop sea. Drop off a civilian? On a, see, I feel like no. so <laughs> naive with this because I was not on a ship. If, if it's bad enough, they could. I've never had anything so bad that underway, we needed someone to come on board. Uh, do you think you'll stay in for 20? No, nah, 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 not for me. Yeah, military is cool, I guess, but it's not for everybody. It's no, it's not. And I think that if you even do like a four or six year stint, like I don't, I haven't heard anyone regretting joining the military for that amount of time. Yeah. You know, like taking those skills that you learn and, and the fact that you get a top secret clearance, like you're already setting yourself up for when you get out. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, I yeah. think that, so you would say that IT is the best intelligence rate? I said best rate right in the Navy. There's, <laughs> there's not, there's, you couldn't convince me there was a better job in the Navy. We had the most uh, upside at the end of the day. Because we get out and in the Navy, we have a great advancement. Yeah. So, all right. Good advancement rate. That's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. It's so super, you want to look at, super easy. whenever you're looking into rates, you want to make sure that there are good advancement rates. Because I know people, HMs, who've been, uh, like a third class, which is like an E4 for like six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
making how I don't know how much they make per month, like sixteen hundred dollars. I feel like you can Google it. I'm yeah, you sure. can Google how much we make, but Not as a, a as a, an E five, you you can make it. You're you're living pretty decently. And then, do you get extra money per diem on when you're underway? No. On deployment. You don't spend money on anything. So you, you save. save. Well, you get sea pay, which okay. the longer you can stay at sea, the more money it is. Like if you go to sea right now, you're gonna make like eighty dollars extra a month. It's not okay. a lot. I'm within my, I think by my second or third month on the ship, I think my sea pay will be up to maybe two twenty. Oh, that's extra month decent. Like, that. like yeah, and it can yeah. it goes up. I don't know how it goes up, but it goes up. Uh, It'll a add lot. up. Yeah, it, it can add up pretty quick if you stay out to sea for a long time. Good. Yeah. I feel like we should get paid more. On when you're on a ship. I wish. <laughs> not the same. I lucked out. I went straight to a squadron. Oh, so okay. a P three squadron. So I okay. yeah, I was always attack like on land, supporting from the ground. So nice. I know I lucked out. I have so a couple of buddies who are ISs, they're all on ships. And they're like, How I don't know how you lucked out. I'm like, I don't know, a big man upstairs is watching, but well, for an IS, that might be good, but for an IT, squadron ITs don't know anything. Like, yeah, I've experienced that too. Yeah, so that's why I go into a small boy. So for, it's the better best. for your career to go straight to a ship. Uh, yeah, small if you're ship like, though, not a big ship. Small ship. Yeah. So cruiser, destroyer. Mm-hmm. Okay. There was, you just, you touch everything. I touch all aspects of the job. Oh, well, I did. I transferred, but. And then very, you're very well-rounded with your knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say so. Good. So you think you're going to get like a, a civilian IT job when you get out? Uh, yeah, that's the goal. Either go to college or get a probably government job or I might do both at the same time. Yeah. Kind of see, just not? see where I'm at in three years when I get out. Yeah. The best piece of advice you have if somebody's looking into the IT rate? Best piece of advice? Um... Like how to be successful, or if it's a good rate for that person in particular. I mean, as long as you're okay with sitting in a room that's about fifty degrees, twelve hours a day. Okay. If you don't mind that, you have no problem. If you don't either. mind being cold. Yeah, and then just I don't. Know, I mean. Indoors. You gotta have a good work ethic in general. Yeah. So like, I've been in the Navy for four years i've been in my i hit my five-year mark in april okay I'm testing for first either this september or march That's exciting like yeah so it's just a little, little bit of work so ethic. five and years it. and you've already went from e1 to almost e6 yes is what you would if you made it yeah if i make it it'll be within five five years. years is incredible that's fast it's pretty quick yeah I lucked out and then you could be potentially a chief what in eight years seven uh, or eight years seven or eight yeah i don't really know how it how that all works. That'd be amazing. It's like when you make E6, you have to wait three more years unless you get an EP. Yeah, I just don't know if the EP counts for making E7 or not. Does it? They have like oh, weird, that's a good, they have that's weird a, rules. Yeah, Chiefs are cheese. weird. They have weird rules. When you yes, hit E7, know. it's a whole different ball game. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if that counts for that, but it might. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be. It'd but be cool. you're getting out. Yeah, so. so <laughs> it's kind of, I just want to maybe make E6, make some money, extra money. Yeah. yeah that's pretty much it. Just wait till I get out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thank yeah, thanks for for coming on. I was I was telling um, it two here that I have asked five or six other ITs to interview. Every single one of them turned me down. They just they just like did not. And it's like being in front of the camera is not easy or fun. But nope. <laughs> no, but I'm so thankful that you um, you agreed to this. It's gonna help a lot of people. Uh, well, I hope so. Yeah. So, because I don't know, I have no, I I know a little bit like about computers, but what you do on a day to day, it's completely different than what we do. So yeah, it's all the background stuff. Yeah, that is all we got for you today. If you have any questions, you can always drop it down in the comments. Let me know, um, and I'll either get you an answer or reach out to it two mills here. But other than that, I am Shay Taylor, and I will catch you guys later.